Okay, so I think we're good to go. Really great to see the attendance today. And thanks everyone for introducing yourself in the chat. I think we have so many countries here, so it's, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, the topic of startup ecosystem is so such an interesting topic and uh, I'm glad you're sharing the, let's say the passion about it and uh, how much uh, uh, it is important for the future of our economies and so on. So uh, really great to connect and I hope a lot of you are going to receive, all of you are going to receive a lot of benefit from today's uh, event. So yeah, basically, my name is Eli David, I'm the CEO of Startup Blink, and let me tell you a little bit about the topic of today. The topic of today is going to be, where are the startup ecosystems of the future? It's going to be a nice experiment of us trying to figure out what, will, what makes, uh, what, what gives an advantage for an ecosystem to actually become, uh, in 10 or 20 years from now, the, a leading startup ecosystem globally. So we're going to try to figure it out a little bit. Hopefully we can arrive to a few uh, interesting insights. By the way, if you want to ask a question, there is a Q&A uh, button. We will try to get to it, but we're very limited with time. So I can't promise to get to it, but on the Q&A uh, section, you can, uh, you can post uh, your question there. Uh, topics of today, I'll tell you a little bit about Startup Link. We're going to talk a little bit about the startup ecosystems of the present, what's happening in the present, uh, a few factors that influence the potential of an ecosystem, uh, uh, some of our maybe insights about the startup ecosystems of the future, uh, and some scenarios that can happen in the future. So it should be very, uh, very interesting. A little bit about uh, startup Blink, uh, we're a global startup ecosystem map and a research center. We are ranking the startup ecosystems of 1,000 cities, 100 countries. We have a dashboard per location, so uh, feel free to use it. Uh, we, are, we also have a network of more than 100 governments uh, in our network that are developing their ecosystem. Uh, everyone is invited um, to register on the map at startuplink.com slash startups. You can add your startup easily and for free over there. Whoever registers is probably going to uh, allow us to, uh, um, let's say, um, um, uh, increase the ranking of their, of their uh, city and country. So uh, that's a little bit of patriotic, uh, patriotic goal. Um, a little bit about what we what we generally do with governments. We help ecosystem developers from governments to analyze their startup ecosystem, build strategic roadmaps, and promote their startup ecosystem to the world. A um, few of our ecosystem partners from this massive network of more than 100 governments include amazing ecosystems, including Enterprise Singapore, the, the, the ecosystem of Markham, Fukuoka in Japan, Ruta Ene in Medellin, Axio in Barcelona and Catalonia, Taiwan Tech Arena. We're working with a few global data partners to make sure that our rankings are the most accurate possible. Um, Crunchbase comes to mind, uh, Statista, SEM Rush, uh, SAP, and many, many others. Meetup. So uh, we're really, really happy about building this massive uh, resource for all of you. Uh, to understand where should you go next and what are the best ecosystems in the world when you're trying to make a decision about your location. The report itself uh, can be downloaded at, uh, at this uh, website. Maybe one, one of our team is going to also uh, uh, post this link in the, in the comments so you can easily download the report if you're interested in startup ecosystem development. Um, feel free to download the report and also if you have any questions our, our team will also post the email our feedback at startuplink.com so you can always reach out to us if you have anything that comes to mind uh, later on after the event as well um, yeah I'll just tell you that currently we're onboarding uh, governments for the next startup ecosystem report of 2023 it's going to be really exciting to see what are the ecosystems that are ranked the highest uh, you can uh, send us a, an email to mahmoud at startuplink.com and uh, uh, we will uh, definitely get back to you. Uh, we gather data from hundreds of ecosystems around the world. And if you want to take part of it and making sure that the ranking is accurate, mahmoud at startuplink.com. Uh, mahmoud will take care of you. I promise you that. Um, a little bit about what we always share and what we always talk about. Uh, which is the importance of uh, startup ecosystems. Many of us as founders don't realize that the decision of where we are building our startup 
has one of the most important implications on our success. Uh, it's not a coincidence that most of the unicorns in the world and most of the successful, even self-funded startups in the world are built in very, very low amount, a very small number of cities. So uh, I think that all of us have to take the time, regardless of what we do, if we are in the startup industry, to think very carefully about, are we in the right place? A good place, a good startup hub gives you access to co-founders, uh, to team members, to suppliers, to investors, of course, that are or, or only in some specific ecosystems, high quality clients that are interested in wor working with startups and are taking risk on working with startups because they know the benefits that they can receive from it. Amazing knowledge base with a lot of meetups and communities and also motivation. Uh, if we're stuck in a place where people are not that much entrepreneurial friendly or startup friendly, it's very hard to disconnect from the constant pressure for us to get a nine to five job. So those places give us a lot of benefits and we, uh, we're we definitely, uh, we love those, uh, those places. Uh, the conclusion, by the way, is that if we're in an underperforming startup ecosystem, we should either leave it or lead it, which means uh, go to a better ecosystem or take a leadership role in our ecosystem and understand that an underperforming ecosystem is also hurting us as entrepreneurs, as stakeholders and so on, and uh, do those things that allow us to basically do those meetups, communities, help each other and so on, connect, mentor, to make sure that our ecosystem grow. If our ecosystem is growing, we're gonna grow with it as well. Uh, definitely not advising to stay in an underperforming ecosystem as a passive person. Uh, or an organization. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's talk a little bit about the startup ecosystems of the, um, of the present, because the present is very important, of course, to figure out what's going on now, who is uh, currently um, um, overperforming. So as you know, there is one queen of the, of the global startup ecosystem. It's called San Francisco. We're talking now about a massive city that has advantages from here until the end of the world. It's basically, you see also in the total score, the difference on the gap 550 from everyone behind it. I will tell you something interesting about San Francisco though. Uh, it is losing its dominance. Uh, in 2019, it was five times bigger than any ecosystem behind it. Then it was four times bigger, three times bigger, and now it's three and a half, two and a half times bigger. So as you can see, the magic, the supernova effect of, uh, of San Francisco is slowly diminishing, uh, which means that if you want to see a startup ecosystem like no other, uh, better go now, uh, because maybe in a few years it would be still the best startup ecosystem in the world with no doubt, but definitely not the special phenomena it has been for, uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, you have over here New York, London, Los Angeles, Boston in the top five, uh, there are a few ecosystems that are very domestic in nature and only cater their local population mostly, uh, which are Beijing, Shanghai, Bangalore, those three are not global ecosystems, but extremely successful ecosystems. Uh, the core reason of their success is a population of over 1 billion people, which allows them to have a massive, massive market. So that's, uh, that's always helpful. And other than that, we see other, other global ecosystems as uh, Tel Aviv with a very small market, that, uh, but still um, uh, managing to, to create global innovation um, and so on. So uh, that's, that's kind of like the idea. And all of those rankings are of 1,000 cities are available in startuplink.com. You can just go there and see the list, filter it, search for your specific country to see your cities. And pretty sure you can find a lot of interesting uh, insights over there. Some of the insights that uh, I mentioned before is the diminishing dominance of, uh, of uh, San Francisco. The top five startup ecosystems in the world are either USA or UK, which means that you get massive advantage by being in the US, first of all, and second of all, by being in an ecosystem that is a native English speaking ecosystem. The world is run in English. Unfortunately, we're doing this, uh, this uh, event also in English just to show you how dominant is this language and how important it is. Um, 
let's talk a little bit about uh, who is centralized like which which countries created one ecosystem that is super powerful and which one actually managed to diversify in the top 50 so 18 out of the 50 startup ecosystems uh, top 50 startup ecosystems in the world are in the us just to show you how dominant is the us and again this dominance is actually decreasing and uh, so it's pretty interesting to see but still uh, it's very very far from everyone else five of those um 50 top ecosystems are from the Republic of China that has managed to do amazing things on innovation, although it's a relatively, uh, not relatively, it's a domestic centered ecosystem, they've still managed to do so many, uh, uh, such a progress uh, in economic value. Three of those ecosystems in the top 50 are from India, maybe the growing giant of the world. Uh, and we see three ecosystems, Bangalore, Delhi, uh, and Mumbai that are in the top 50. And we have a, a few other countries that managed to have two um, ecosystems in the top 50 uh, that should receive a lot of uh, congratulations. We're talking about Germany, Canada, Spain, and Australia. Those four countries managed to have two ecosystems in the, um, in the top uh, 50, so that's great. A little bit about, uh, let, let's start talking a little bit about the startup ecosystems of, uh, of the future. And uh, um, in order to do that, we did a, lot, a little bit of a research that tells us about what are the countries that have the best business environment for startups. Which countries have great internet speed, internet freedom, great policies, um, access to, to companies that you, you, can, you can use Stripe, you can use PayPal, you can use all those things easily and so on. When we, we, we did about 20 different parameters, R&D investment, patents and so on, and um, some of those countries that are really overperforming are countries like Sweden, for example, that is on the, on the top of our business environment uh, uh, list. Uh, you can see United Kingdom is doing great. Norway uh, is doing really, really great. Denmark, Finland, and so on. Some ecosystems that are doing uh, not so great, for example, Israel, that is now number 23 in their business environment, are actually number three in the world in their output, in their general ranking. Just to show you uh, something that is important to mention, that um, business environment is very important, but the key to startup ecosystem success is the mindset and the quality of our entrepreneurs. Uh, our governments and everyone can try as much as they want, but if our entrepreneurs do not have the mindset of innovation, of taking risks and so on, we will have limited impact on how far we can go. And it's important to, to mention this. We're really dependent on our entrepreneurs when developing and building amazing startup ecosystems, much more than government policies. But still, government policies are very important. So that's uh, important to say. Let's uh, talk now a little, a little bit about a few factors uh, influencing the future potential of a startup ecosystem. Uh, I'll just present briefly the five of them and then go to elaborate on each one. First of all, the flywheel of previous success stories. The second one is brain gain or brain drain. The third one is global focus. The third one is knowledge of our uh, knowledge of English. And uh, the fifth one is uh, startup heroes or startup manipulators. I will explain a little bit later. First of all, the flywheel of success stories. Success stories are the oxygen of a startup ecosystem and its narrative. Uh, they're not only unicorns, although unicorns are the best success story and every one of us is celebrating whenever we have a unicorn in our ecosystems, but some ecosystems don't still have unicorns, but we still can celebrate new milestones, exits, even if it's a $1 million or $5 million exit, investments that broke a milestone or a record, a startup that got accepted to Y Combinator and so on. We have a lot of reasons to celebrate, especially in, as governments and especially as startup founders as well, that we want to make sure that everyone knows about the success of our city and our country. So I really advise everyone to pay attention to those milestones. Uh, have our entrepreneurs as role models. They're basically supposed to be the heroes of our ecosystem. Um, if we have a good success story and, and good uh, narrative for our ecosystem, it attracts more talent. People go to successful places. They don't go to unsuccessful places. It attracts more startups. And of course, attracts more investors. Investors arrive when they see that they have a fear of missing out and they see constantly an ecosystem that is successful. 
Uh, this success also establishes a culture of innovation and risk taking when you're going to tell your parents or your family that you're going to become an entrepreneur in a place that has no success stories, they would look at you as someone who is crazy. When you're going to say the same in a place that has a lot of success, they will tell you, why didn't you do it yesterday? So that's, a, that's really important. Uh, and of course, the success increases the visibility and credibility of our startup ecosystems. The next topic is brain uh, drain or brain gain. The biggest tragedy of an economy is losing our top talent, especially on startups. We have to understand why are people leaving and fix the reasons that they're leaving. We have to understand also how do we make more talented people arrive to our ecosystem. So uh, it is important to say in a little bit unfortunate startup ecosystems are a zero sum game. Uh, there is a limited amount of talent in the world and this talent has to choose where do they stay. And we wanna make sure that they pick our ecosystem. That's basically the idea. Unfortunately, uh, it's, a, it's a talent, uh, uh, in a way, talent uh, uh, competition. And we all need to make sure that our cities are positioned in the best way possible to win this talent competition. Another uh, parameter that really signals success is global focus. An ecosystem can only grow if it focuses locally um, on its national market and it has very limited ability to grow. Uh, there are only two countries, maybe three with the United States, but ma mainly Ch uh, the Republic of China and India that can grow because they have a massive market. There is what we call a middle-sized market curse, which, which is basically countries of more than 20 million people where the entrepreneurs are uh, a little bit confused uh, they're, they're saying, maybe I should open, I should uh, do something for the local market instead of the global market. And when they start with the local market, they feel comfortable and they just stay there. And instead of a massive unicorn, we have a nice lifestyle business. Uh, so the, the middle, middle sized countries should be aware uh, that uh, I'm talking middle size, everything between 20 million to 200 or 300 million. They should be aware that this is a problem and they should push people into becoming more global with their startups. The small countries are actually winning from this because no one in Israel or Estonia thinks that they can innovate for the local market or, or uh, of their country, which makes them go global from day one. And this is basically the, the best thing that can happen to an ecosystem. Knowledge of the English language. Uh, we're doing this, uh, this webinar in English. Uh, uh, everything is built on English. Uh, communication skills are what is are needed for entrepreneurs to be successful. The most important thing is high quality communication skills. In this case, of course, English is the chosen language. Uh, this gives an unfair advantage for native speaking countries and it gives us a lot of incentive for non-native speaking in, uh, countries uh, to improve the level of English in their education system. It's absolutely critical. Uh, another element would be manipulators versus startup heroes. Everyone wants to be a hero. No one wants to be considered as a manipulator. Uh, how our population is perceiving successful entrepreneurs is key. If we have a startup hero culture where people are looking at successful entrepreneurs and saying they are a hero, instead of saying, hey, they probably did something wrong, they're a manipulator, uh, those people will become serial entrepreneurs. Uh, if, if they are looked on as a manipulator, they will just go to the United States. So the idea is to celebrate our heroes and to make sure that they stay, that they feel welcome, that they feel celebrated, and they will become serial entrepreneurs and also become the investors. Needless to say, many of the success of, of stories of Israel and Estonia are built on uh, the success of previous startup entrepreneurs that uh, were celebrated as heroes, decided to stay and build the next generation of, uh, of startup success. A little bit about just a quick sample of startup ecosystems around the world. Uh, San Francisco, we talked about it. It has the first, uh, uh, first mover advantage. Uh, it was the first one that understood that startup ecosystems are the future of economies, the, um, the economic benefit it reaps from it and the United States reaps from San Francisco becoming the queen of the global startup ecosystems is massive. Uh, by the way, it means for us, let's start as early as possible to build our startup ecosystem. There is no time to lose. Uh, the, the best uh, time to plant a tree was 30 years ago and the second best time is today. Uh, so uh, the idea is to start not to delay, uh, not to think about is this the right time or not, 
it is the right time. It was before it was better, but now is the best second uh, right time. San Francisco will lose a little bit of relative power, but uh, honestly, there is no obvious contender for many years to come. It is keep on losing its power, but no one will take its place. Uh, we, we thought it might be uh, Beijing, but there was a, a decision maybe to go more local over here, uh, which means that generally now we're talking in San Francisco, diminishing and blending into normal ecosystems from China, from the, from the EU, from Europe and so on. It's going to be very interesting, but uh, this is a phenomenon that happens once every millennia probably, and uh, I'm, I don't think it would happen again with any other city uh, in the future. A little bit about the situation in the European Union. We don't have any city that is close to the top five, uh, except for the outstanding London that is out of the EU. Uh, Europe uh, has the most amazing talent, but still has not managed to conquer a real place of leading innovation. Some bright spots. Paris seems to have a great momentum, so we're looking uh, we're looking very carefully at Paris. It's currently ranked tenth in the world. Berlin is stable and strong, if I'm not mistaken, ranked number 11. Stockholm, by the way, is an ecosystem that is closing gaps, and it's really nice to see. So we're very happy to see a new EU can a city uh, approaching and now finally making it to the top 25. So it would be really interesting to see. Uh, a lot of interesting things are happening in uh, India. Bangalore, a top 10 global startup ecosystem. We have a growing economy there, a large population, English speaking, open to the world, many unicorns and Pantheon uh, uh, companies. Uh, definitely going to be interesting to see if India can lead us uh, in the future. Uh, by the way, all these uh, Central Asian and, uh, and, uh, and Far East, th those are the, really the countries and the cities that uh, have an amazing potential for the future. So we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye because uh, it's it's really where the potential is currently. Although we see also a lot of innovations in Africa, we see the city of Lagos really boosting ahead. And of course, a few very interesting cities in South America, many of them, by the way, are in Colombia, um, uh, Sao Paulo uh, as well, uh, Buenos Aires, Santiago, Mexico City. So really uh, exciting to see how innovation is spreading all over the world. Uh, Canada is also closing gaps with the US, which is always great to see. Uh, uh, Canadian cities, namely in Ontario, really pushing forward. And uh, yeah, Tel Aviv is a great example of, a, of an ecosystem under difficult conditions geopolitically that has managed to do a lot in terms of growing its ecosystems. Uh, went global from day one. The, the fastest way of getting getting kicked out from an investor meeting in Israel is to say that you're building something for the Israeli market. So uh, the, the mindset is definitely there. And it's also a center of innovation and research and development. Some potential scenarios for startup ecosystem development. Uh, cities are the new countries. Each city is struggling to build an economic engine. Uh, there is a lot of decentralization now, and we have to work on a city level to make sure that we're uh, preparing our cities for the future. And also, we are now seeing the maybe the creation of the startup ecosystems in, on the cloud. Um, Telegram, for example, uh, is, is a company that, uh, that doesn't really have a base. Uh, it's, it's spread all over. Uh, startup Link, by the way, is another example of that. We're extremely remote. All our people are from different, uh, we have more than, uh, than 10 people, all of them in different uh, countries. So it might be interesting to see um, where ecosystems are being built. But again, a word of warning, where you are currently still matters. We're really not in the metaverse just yet. And if you pick the right city, the amount of... Um, of let's say potential and alternative um, um, uh, gifts that you're gonna receive randomly are gonna be so big that you will only understand that if you go to a big hub. And that's basically it. We don't have a lot of time for questions. So I'm gonna pass it to, for, uh, to Katrin to, to take the lead from now, but uh, feel free to send us questions at feedback at startuplink.com. If you have any questions, uh, we will take them uh, from here. Um, and yeah, if you want to stay connected, you have a few uh, uh, barcodes to our LinkedIn, to our podcast about startup ecosystem development. If you care about this topic, that's what I do in every episode with our team, just talking about startup ecosystem development and our Twitter. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I think uh, we're going to turn it to, uh, to our team to take the lead. So thank you so much.
Hi, Catherine. Thank you, Ali. Hi, Ali. Yes. Hi, everyone, um, and welcome to everyone that's just joining us. So, as Ali yeah. said, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at feedback at startuplink.com. Um, our team members will also put the link again to the report download and our map. Um, yeah, so welcome to the next session of the Ecosystem Summit. So for this session, um, we will be we will be introducing um, different ecosystems from around the world. Um, each ecosystem developer will have a time to speak for six minutes. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to type them on the Q&A. Um, you will also be given the chance to get the information of the ecosystem developer in case you are interested in knowing more about uh, moving or the ecosystem and the benefits of moving there. Yeah, so I think we can start. So um, the first ecosystem is the ecosystem of Central Asia. So the Karak startup ecosystem is comprised um, of different um, Latin countries, and currently we have seven ranked countries on start of link, China, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, Mongolia, and Azerbaijan. Um, you can know more about the Karak startup ecosystem on startupkarak.org. Um, our presenter today will be um, Mr. Sad Parasha, who is the Karak Unit Head and Senior Regional Corporation Specialist at Asian Development Bank. Um, now, me please um, promote Mr. Sad as panelist. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi, Fad. How are you? Hello. Just give me one second. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi, Catherine. So I can continue if if I'm heard clearly. Yes, uh, please, please start. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, hello, everybody. So I'm uh, uh, joining you from Manila uh, in the Philippines. Uh, we are headquartered here in the Asian Development Bank. Uh, we are uh, acting as the secretariat for the Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation Program. Uh, as per mandate of Asian Development Bank, uh, our role is to support development in the region. And we do that through various means. And one of the ways uh, that we have found useful over the past many years is helping the countries uh, work closely on number of uh, uh, issues and areas. Uh, we have recently uh, uh, supported the member countries uh, to, for developing and adopting a digitalization, a CARIC digital strategy. Uh, but before that, very briefly, uh, CARIC is a, a partnership of 11 countries. Uh, they include uh, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Afghanistan, and Pakistan in South Asia. China and Mongolia in East Asia and the five Central Asian uh, states. Uh, we have been working since 2001 uh, and have helped mobilize a significant amount of resources for uh, projects uh, supporting transportation networks, energy trade, uh, uh, energy security, and movement of uh, people and trade uh, facilitation. And we are also supporting work on economic corridor uh, development. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. The digital strategy uh, I mentioned, which was adopted by these 11 countries, uh, has five pillars. Uh, and basically, uh, the, the objective uh, is to 
uh, reap the digital dividends through more jobs, growth, and improved services in the region. Uh, this, the, the strategy itself has uh, uh, five pillars, and it covers uh, uh, it, it covers various sectors which are a focus of the CARIC program, and in the, then they include agriculture, tourism, transport, energy, uh, e-commerce, and government services. Uh, through these pillars, uh, which the countries have decided to collaborate to implement uh, through the leadership and um, uh, leadership and government investment pillar, the idea is to strengthen regional institutions for digital leadership, create incentives for cooperation in the digital space, uh, attracting investment in in the digital economy, um, and uh, similarly under digital policy as. Uh, you may uh, already have an idea. Uh, we want uh, for the countries to work together on harmonizing uh, legislation and regulation across the countries, uh, enhancing cybersecurity laws, um, aligning data policies uh, across the member countries. Uh, the third pillar, uh, through the third pillar, the idea is to <clears throat> Uh, uh, invest and strengthen the digital infrastructure, uh, mainly to address also the digital divide and then uh, supporting the development of what we uh, call the platform economy. Similarly, uh, the fourth pillar helps or aims at uh, improving education training in the region, uh, uh, strengthening digital skills, um, uh, and then finally, the fifth pillar on innovation entrepreneurship, where <clears throat> I think all of you joining today uh, kind of fall in that uh, area, how we can support the innovation ecosystem, uh, how we can uh, boost uh, ICT exports, uh, help uh, entrepreneurs, uh, budding entrepreneurs, uh, ideas, uh, in the region, uh, develop partnerships uh, in in uh, you know for the different teams to work together, uh, angel networks, uh, it, and then so many uh, other uh, activities that we are supporting. Next, please. Uh, the the startup ecosystems uh, in the region. Uh, we are uh, we have uh, initiated some work. Uh, the CARIC startup map. Uh, where you can uh, see how the startups are doing in the region. Uh, it also uh, uh, provides us a benchmark to evaluate the progress of different city ecosystem versus other city uh, systems. We are promoting a CARIC innovation network, uh, providing, hoping to provide opportunities for entrepreneur support uh, working in the CARIC region mainly for collaboration, organizing in-person events, uh, regional startup boot camps, uh, startup exchange program, uh, provide uh, analytical uh, research uh, studies, uh, and then uh, even <clears throat> uh, promote uh, across the border, uh, working uh, between the teams, uh, incubation programs, uh, involving teacher, uh, in, involving uh, startups from from the region, and these are some of the ideas. And we are also uh, eager and actively collaborating with the uh, various universities in the region uh, to encourage upstream work uh, and inculcate uh, entrepreneurship uh, spirit in the region, uh, especially in countries where the idea is new. And last slide uh, mainly is uh, I'm going to leave uh, you with some contacts uh, and some web links that you can see. And please feel free to uh, reach us. If you have, uh, if you are from the region, uh, great. If we can uh, be in touch and support your work. If you are not in the region but have interest uh, in partnering 
with uh, various startups and programs, or if you want to know more about uh, government initiatives, uh, other uh, programs, please feel free to contact us. And I look forward to hearing about your work and see how we can perhaps collaborate and support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saad. Thank you for that uh, wonderful presentation about CARIC. So if everyone, uh, anyone else is interested about the CARIC startup ecosystem, please feel free to go on the link. Uh, and thank you again, Saad and Mudazir, for taking the time to speak with, uh, speak about the ecosystem today. Yes, so um, the next um, startup ecosystem um, is the startup ecosystem of Sunshine Coast Australia. Um, our presenter will be Wendy McDonald, who is the investment attraction lead um, of the Sunshine Coast Council. Uh, Wendy, could you raise your hand so we can promote you as host? Can you please promote uh, Wendy, please? So while we're promoting Wendy, so I'll, I'll speak more about the Sunshine Coast startup ecosystem. So Sunshine Coast, uh, it's ranked sixth in Australia and 243rd globally. It's overperforming in the industries of energy and environment, food tech, and hardware and IoT. Hi, Wendy, how are you? Good evening or good afternoon. <laughs> Okay, so I think we have some technical difficulties. So we'll, we'll move on to um, the next startup ecosystem, which is um, Catalonia. Um, so Catalonia will be, our presenter will be um, Roger Costa, who is the manager of FDI promotion and external partners for Actual. So can we please um, promote Roger? So while we're promoting Roger, I'll speak more about Catalonia. So currently we have um, a couple of ecosystems um, ranked in Catalonia. The first being, of course, Barcelona, which is ranked first in Spain and 37 globally. It's overperforming in food tech, energy and environment, e-commerce and retail. Hi, Roger. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for joining yeah. us today. Thank you for the invitation. Can you see my screen, my presentation? Yes, we do, but it's not full screen yet. Um, we, we see the PowerPoint um, software. Now is okay? Uh, no, uh, we still see the, the not full screen. Oh, it's strange because I see my presentation in, in, in a full screen format, so... I don't know if you want to project it. Yes, I can I can project the presentation on my end. Okay. Thank you so much, Catherine. So, I uh, hello everybody. Um, I'm Roger Costa, the FDI Promotion Manager at uh, Axio, Catalonia Trade and Investment, the Catalan agency in charge of promoting foreign companies and foreign startups willing to invest in our region. So, uh, next slide, please. I'm going to talk today in this uh, five minutes about what is Barcelona and Catalonia, very briefly about why Catalonia is good for startups, uh, the resources we have for startups, especially the startup capital, which is our main tool, and our services as the agency uh, for uh, supporting uh, international companies uh, on their uh, invest projects in, in Southern Europe, especially in Catalonia. Next one, please. Next one. 
Okay, what is Catalonia? Catalonia is uh, one of the 17th regions in Spain, in the northeast uh, of Spain, southern Europe, south of French, uh, uh, France, sorry. Um, and this is one of these 17 regions, but uh, Catalonia by itself uh, represents around 20% of the Spanish GDP, 30% of the international uh trade, uh, imports and exports, and in terms of industrial GDP is even uh, higher. So it is the most important economic region in, in Spain, and we have a in, and that's why we have more than 9,000 multinationals already operating in our region. Why we are uh, unique in terms of um, ecosystem in Europe, because uh, we combine um, a mix of factors like the first one, which is an important industrial base, traditional industry and industry of the future. I'm going to go back to this point afterwards. We have an important uh, tech hub ecosystem, especially because uh, the, the, the amount and the amazing uh, startups that we have already based and growing in Catalonia and from Catalonia. We are also a good um, entrance gate to Europe for uh, international companies, special, especially for, uh, for Asian companies and, and American companies. Um, and uh, at the same time, and probably uh, this is the main reason of uh, the main reason for the other factors, for having the other factors, is that we have an incredible uh, pool of local and international talent in Catalonia. Um, many, many people from all over the world is willing to come uh, for work and live in our in our region, and we have an incredible university uh, universities and academic ecosystem, technology uh, centers. And, and that's why we have an important uh, pool of local talent, but also conditions for attracting uh, international talent and retaining uh, this talent. And uh, finally, uh, a very pro-business environment in terms of a public sector, uh, very business oriented and companies uh, with uh, very familiar with uh, international uh, operations and relationships. Next one, please, Catherine. So this is not uh, ourselves who are telling this, but the real leaders who are the companies. And this uh, here you have some examples of uh, C-level managers of the multinationals like Group Volkswagen, uh, HP, AAM from the automotive sector, North America, Ubisoft from the video game sector, or uh, Universal Robotics, uh, um, outstanding the, the assets that we have in Catalonia, Barcelona, like digital transformation processes, creative ecosystem because of the talent, our cl clusters policy promoting, um, among others, the startup ecosystem, the talent by itself, and access to the European market. Next slide, please, Catherine. We work uh, from the public side with the private uh, entities, uh, private companies, local uh, Catalan companies and international companies already based in Catalonia in order to promote the, the economy, uh, the ecosystem to be open to new startups uh, and to uh, facilitate the relationship between the startups and the big companies with new uh, technology challenges in Catalonia. These are the traditional, some of the traditional sectors, chemicals, food and drinks, automotive or life sciences. You can find as a startups, a very big players and global reference players already operating and uh, doing a scouting of startups in Catalonia. Next one, please. And this is uh, the sectors of the future we are working with and uh, in which we are uh, absolutely immersed uh, in terms of digital uh, transformation. So um, this is mobility of the future, design and fashion, e-commerce, smart cities, food tech, biotechnology, green chemicals and green economy in general, among others. Next one. 
So uh, just an overview of our startup ecosystem. And uh, just to mention that we have more than 2,000 uh, startups in Catalonia currently. Uh, you will find in our website, catalonia.com, uh, our Barcelona Catalonia Startup Hub. You can find uh, by sector and by technology the startups we have here. You can move ahead, uh, Catherine, please. And why the, uh, Catalonia is a good place for startups. Next one. Some rankings here. Uh, first one uh, from Startup Blink, uh, Blink uh, which is awarding us as or ranking us as the fifth uh, most important uh, startup ecosystem in in Europe in terms of uh, places, uh, better place, best places for for setting up a startup. Uh, below Berlin, uh, Paris, Berlin, Stockholm, and Amsterdam. Next one, please. Another rank that we uh, we are proud of is the the one from Startup uh, Heatmap Europe, which consider that uh, Barcelona is the second favorite startup hub in Europe for uh, founders for setting a startup according to founders' opinion. Next one, please. And another ranking from uh, Deal Room, uh, which considers or ranks us uh, as the fifth uh, European hub in terms of number of rounds of uh, funding raised. So uh, it is very important for startups to uh, the, the fundraising processes. Uh, and uh, you will find here uh, an incredible local venture capitals and international uh, venture capitals already based in Catalonia and facilitating the fundraising for startups. Next one, please. And uh, last but not least, fourth uh, ecosystem in Europe with the highest number of scale-ups. So that is also important because you will find here not the opportunity in Catalonia, Barcelona to create a startup, to set up a business, but also to scale up. Next one. Uh, resources. I'm gonna just to, um, uh, to to mention you the the most tool that we have to promote the initial uh, steps of a startup. Uh, this is the startup capital uh, program. You will find more information again in our website catalonia.com. But it is a direct grant up to uh, hundred thousand euros for emerging technology uh, startups uh, requiring financing for the first phases of the business, especially for modulating. The, the business case for uh, defining product and service and, and to start uh, evolving the business and, and deploying the business in our in our country in our region and uh, this program uh, it is gonna be the fair, the five edition this uh, 2023 and in the previous editions we have been able to create uh, thanks to this program 500 new jobs in Catalonia and uh, facilitate we have uh, facilitated facilitated the raising of uh, 30, uh, 33 million euros uh, from uh, private investment to this com to these startups uh, uh, helped uh, through the startup capital program from Axiom. Next one, please. And finally, uh, who we are, uh, we are Catalonia Trade and Investment, a Startup Catalonia, uh, an agency from the Catalan government uh, promoting the local startup ecosystem and helping foreign startups to land in our region. We have more than 35 years helping companies. And uh, next one, Catherine, and which is the last one, uh, you will find uh, one more time in our website, catalonia.com, the, 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 the services we can provide the solutions to investors, but especially for international startups, we can help uh, in, a, in an important way, especially on financing and incentives information uh, and accessing to the to programs uh, and tools. Uh, also, we can help on finding the best place to be, co-workings, uh, clusters, etc. And finally, to facilitate the access uh, to the to the the right partners in our in our country, I think it is the last one. Um, just an invitation. Uh, I, we will be proud to have you in uh, taking part of this of this ecosystem. Hopefully, you will join us very soon. And uh, in the last slide, you have our uh, contact uh, in the case you want to talk uh, further about uh, business opportunities in Catalonia. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Roger. Thank you for taking time to present about the Catalonia startup ecosystem. Um, if you're really interested, as Roger said, feel free to message and email them um, on the contacts that were sent. Okay. Yeah, so um, we will be moving on. So before that, welcome again to everyone that just that is just now joining us. So um, in this session, um, we already had two pitches, but further on, we will have more pitches from ecosystem developers. We will be, they will be speaking about their startup ecosystems and um, introducing um, the ways that they are developing and also incentives for entrepreneurs and investors who would like to relocate. So each person will have six minutes to pitch. And if you have any questions, feel free to put it on the Q&A. Um, and the developers will try to answer your questions if they have the chance. So now uh, we have the ecosystem of Sunshine, which uh, our presenter will be Wendy McDonald. So while ago, I already said a few facts about Sunshine Coast, but just again, it's the sixth um, ecosystem in Australia. It's 143rd in the world. And some interesting verticals in the ecosystem are energy and environment, food tech, and hardware and IoT. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Uh, I think you're a panelist, um, but you're on mute. Yeah. Here we go. Hello there. Hi, Wendy. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your, your summit. Thank you for joining us. I know it's quite late, so thank you for taking the time to, to speak with speak for the crowd today. Uh, you can start. Um, you can also share your screen if you have the presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. So can you see the QR code? Yes, we do. Okay. So good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Wendy McDonald, and I am from the Sunshine Coast Council um, from the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Queensland. So we're promoting the Sunshine Coast as the new place for tech in Australia. And I would love everybody on the call to connect me to me through this QR code. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to move through my screen. Um, sorry, Catherine, are you able to move to the next slide, please? Um, I cannot move now because it's your um, it's your presentation, but I can do it. I can present from from my side instead if that if that's better for you. Could could you move to the next slide or not? One second. Um, okay. Um. Um, were you able to, I was not able to move your side, um, um, yeah. um, are you able to, to play the slides or not? Yes. Could you move to, to the next slide to, for me? Um, I would need to share my screen instead, if that's okay. That's great, thank you. Um, if we could move to the next slide. If you see that All slide. Right, so I'm I'm assuming that a lot of people don't even know where the Sunshine Coast is in Australia. So I have a, a video here that I think gives a good presentation. So would you mind playing that, please, Catherine? Oh, sorry, it's a slide before. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, the video isn't showing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's good now. Uh, and there should be some volume with them. Thank you. Thank you. So just an overview of the Sunshine Coast. So in Australia, there's 537 local government areas and we are the ninth largest local government area in Australia. We're one of Australia's fastest growing regions. We have a population of around 350,000, but the forecast is for that to grow to 500,000 by 2030. So although that may seem quite small, we have a work catchment of more than a million. But the, the thing which is really special about the Sunshine Coast is we have a highly connected and highly collaborative ecosystem and community. We've been recognised as a smart 21 intelligent community over the past eight years. And we're also in the top three most loved travel destinations in the world. So we, we live in a very beautiful part of the planet. Could you, next slide please. So although we have, we are a relatively small region, we have a lot of big things happening. So the image on the right is the vision of a new city centre, which is a 20 year plan. The image below is, is what's actually happening at the moment. So we are the only new city centre being built in Australia. We have a new international airport, which is going to open up the Sunshine Coast to Southeast Asian market. So we will have direct flights in the next few years from the Sunshine Coast out to Singapore. We have a new international broadband network, and that consists of an international broadband cable coming into the Sunshine Coast. We have a cable landing station and a data centre, and we can provide the fastest data connection from the east coast of Australia to Asia and the second fastest to the US. We have the largest university hospital in the Southern Hemisphere. We have just been accredited a biosphere and aimed to be Australia's most sustainable region. And we, um, in 2032, the Sunshine Coast will have venues and sporting events to support the 2032 Olympic Games. Next slide, please. So underpinning our innovation ecosystem is a strong foundation to grow business. We have universities, TAFE, we have the digital infrastructure, which I've just spoken about, incubators, accelerators, industry groups, co-working spaces. 15% of our new businesses are tech related and thousands of people work in the tech related businesses who are mostly 25 to 54. We have seven high value in industries that we're looking to attract investment and Council has a number of innovative um, programs, and one of them is a jobs hub, which is now connecting talent with local industry. Next slide, please. So my aim is to provide the most outstanding investment support in Australia from any council. And so we offer a range of incentives, which include financial incentives and non-financial incentives. We also offer a range of support and we're very mindful that if companies are coming into Australia, coming to the Sunshine Coast, they may not know how to set up their business and they may need help with accounting and legal issues and may need help with um, 
finding visas. And so we provided very comprehensive support to businesses which are coming into the Sunshine Coast, which is tailored to their needs. Next slide, please. So one of our new incentives, we, we're running a campaign called Testing Tech in Paradise. And what that is, the opportunities for companies who are seeking to develop new products um, and uh, before the commercialization of those products to come to the Sunshine Coast, Council has opened its doors to, to businesses who are looking to test and trial and has a range of digital infrastructure, which includes access to Wi-Fi 6, new smart multifunction poles, sensors and kiosks. And I guess what this does allow is companies to test and trial new products. And we believe we are the only council in Australia that is offering that service. Next slide, please. So what we're aiming to do is to attract businesses that want to bring their business to the Sunshine Coast or bring their job to the Sunshine Coast. And we, um, we have a very comprehensive ecosystem and community to support those businesses. So if you'd like more information, can you please call me? My details are there. Or please feel free to scan the QR code and contact me. I'd love to have a chat with anyone who, who would like to um, have a discussion after this presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you for sharing uh, to us the wonderful things that you're doing there over at Sunshine Coast. So as Wendy said, if you have any questions, feel free to contact her. You can also send us a message and we'll forward any questions you may have about Sunshine Coast to the Sunshine Coast Council. Thank you so much, Wendy. Okay, so um, now we're, we're traveling all over uh, all the way to Japan, and we will get to know more about the Kyoto Startup Ecosystem. So our speaker um, will be Hideki Kokeisan, who is the concert yeah. part of this application at Jekyll Kyoto. So a few things about Kyoto. So Kyoto is a startup ecosystem in Japan. They're ranked 182nd globally, and um, interesting industries for the ecosystem are energy and environment, health, and also hardware and IoT. Um, hello, um, Kokeisan, is that... Uh, uh, yes, Koike speaking. Yes, great. Thank you for joining us and taking the time to speak to the crowd today. So um, as I mentioned, you have six minutes. Um, please feel free to start uh, if, if you're ready. Yeah. Should I share my, my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Yes, can you see? Thank you for you are giving us such a nice opportunity to explain our startup Capital Kyoto. I'm Hideki Koike, working on Jetro Kyoto. So today I'd like to introduce startup Capital Kyoto. It's a nice ecosystem. Kyoto has a unique business ecosystem, which is quite useful for small and medium scale startup. One is a nice business mind. Kyoto is a very famous for traditional things like food, clothes, ceramic wares, games, and so on. On the other hand, Kyoto citizen loves new things and the business person also loves new things. And one more advantage is the uh, facilities. There are a lot of the uh, supporting companies in various uh, business areas. This is one of the reasons why there are a lot of the uh, past startup developed uh, now the, uh, they uh, become uh, world leading companies in their own business areas. Look at these brands. These are all world leading companies in their own business areas. Some company introduce new technology to develop uh, product and service. Then 
achieve drastic growth, like uh, Nintendo, as you know well, right? This is also one of the world leading electronics component makers. Started from traditional family startup. At first, she started business for a ceramic insulator for electricity wiring with traditional technology of ceramic wear production. After that, she developed ceramic capacitors. With the uh, <clears throat> uh, support, techno technical support from uh, uh, one professor in Kyoto University. Uh, this ceramic capacitor produced with the uh, new material and achieve high capacitance value. That's why the um, many companies use this type of ceramic capacitor on the times. After that, she continued to develop uh, new products with uh, new materials and the new technologies. Now, the she is the uh, world leading company. She occupied the uh, major uh, top world top market shares. Most of uh, every electronics equipment makers use her products. Brand in previous uh, slide. Kyocera or Nintendo or such kind of the <clears throat> brand also have a same business success stories. And uh, Kyoto business person used to say, 100 years old company is a new company. Even generals say the life of the company is 30 years old. In fact, there are a lot of long life companies in Kyoto in various business areas you see there. Kyoto, uh, why there are a lot of long life companies in Kyoto? Because Kyoto company developed business in her own business area. Even it's a very traditional business area. She is developing new products and new service with the uh, new trial and the new technologies. This is, this comes uh, unique and important business philosophy, strategy, and management. When you open startup in Kyoto and uh, expand network in Kyoto business world, you might study about the management a lot and grow yourself with your expanded network. As you can see, Kyoto has been facilitated necessary component for startup. You can use necessary component for this, for, for your startup. There are incubation, acceleration programs, venture capital, pitch event opportunity, co-working facility, lot of the uh, such a components you can use. So now Kyoto open your startup in these industry areas. Okay, try your startup in Kyoto and enjoy business and life in Kyoto. Thank you. That's all from me.
Thank you so much. Thank you for introducing to us the efforts that you've been doing at Kyoto. And I think everyone learned a lot more about the Kyoto startup ecosystem through your presentation. Um, if anyone wants to know more about the Kyoto startup ecosystem, you can message us on Startup Link or also um, Jetro Kyoto or Startup um, City Kyoto. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you very much. much. And have a great evening. Yeah, thank you. Bye. So now we're, we're still staying in Asia and we'll get to know more about the Taiwanese startup ecosystem. So our pre presenter will be Yo Huang with, from the Taiwan Tech Arena. Um, a little thing, few things about Taiwan. So Taiwan is currently ranked fourth in East Asia and um, 25th globally. Strong, ex, uh, wow. strong verticals of Taiwan are hardware and IoT, social leisure, and energy and environment. Hi Yo, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Catherine, for having me. Thank you for joining us. Let me share my screen. Okay. okay yeah, we can see your screen, but it's not yet full full screen. I think. Great. That's perfect. Yeah. All right. So we're all we're all good, right? <laughs> Okay, yeah. so wonderful time, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, Ellie and Catherine and the Startup Link team for inviting us to pitch our ecosystem. So um, let me dive right into it. My name is Yo um, from the Taiwan Tech Arena team. I'll be telling you a bit about uh, TTA, which is Taiwan's flagship startup ecosystem building program launched by the National Science and, Science and Technology Council. All right, so Taiwan has always been a high-tech nation, uh, as well as a global design and manufacturing base. Uh, so it is our science, parks, and industry clusters that contribute to the continuous growth of our high-tech industry. Uh, we're number one in semiconductor, uh, IC packaging, number two in ID design, TFT, LCD. So uh, we're very proud to join Startup Link, a uh, global startup ecosystem ranking in 2020, and we rank number 30 in 2020. And in 2021, we rank number 26. And 20, in 2022, we're very proud that we made it to the top 25. Um, we rank uh, seventh in the Asia Pacific region, and we pride ourselves as the hardware powerhouse uh, because we rank uh, 14th globally in hardware and IoT. Uh, other notable top verticals include uh, COVID innovation, um, health, and marketing and sales. All right, so how do we achieve that? Um, Taiwan is ranked top 15 by different global institutes for our global competitiveness and our business environment. Um, and, for, um, and for a country of 23 million, uh, we have eight enterprises in the Fortune Global 500. So that's something we're really proud of. And I think in the startup link terms, they're called pantinons. Okay, so uh, with all these advantages we have to offer, we set out to build a vibrant international startup ecosystem in Taiwan by serving as the launching pad for startups, local and international, to go global through Taiwan's innovation, manufacturing capability, R&D, and talent. So our, our goal is to serve as the platform to connect technology, talent, market, and capital uh, between Taiwan and the world. Um, we work with world-class accelerators to support over 250 local and international startups each year, mainly in the field of AI, software, and semiconductor. And we provide over 8,000 square meter of co-working uh, co-working and co-creation space at two of our locations, uh, one in the heart of Taipei City and the other one in the heart of tech in Tainan, which is in, in the South. Uh, we also work closely with networks of investors and enterprises to promote uh, collaboration between industries and startup, as well as provide entrepreneurs with funding uh, opportunities from government, angel investors, VC, CVCs, uh, last but not least, we support our startups with marketing, exhibition, and media relations. So as mentioned, TTA offers two co-creation space for startups uh, 
and our ecosystem building partners. One is located in the heart of Taipei City, the capital in the northern in northern Taiwan. The other is located in Salun, smart green energy science city in Tainan, in southern Taiwan. And TTA South, uh, as we call it, has just officially opened um, in the uh, at the end of 2021. So um, in Taipei City, our capital, uh, Taipei City is our capital is in northern Taiwan and TTA is located in Taipei Arena, which is the this big arena that you see right here. And it is the it place to be for startups for its prime location and proximity to networks of enterprises, investors, government agencies. In other words, most of the resources available in northern Taiwan. And in TTA South, on the other hand, um, uh, it is strategically located in South Taiwan, in Tainan. It boasts a beautiful multifunctional co-creation space of over 4,000 square meter, located in the cybersecurity and smart technology R&D building in Salun, um, smart green energy science city. Um, TTA South aims to support startups in smart tech, precision medicine, as well as clean and circular tech. And it offers Taiwan's most comprehensive tech verification and demonstration site. So our goal is to connect startups with the local industries and bridge resources between Northern and Southern Taiwan uh, to boost the growth of the startup ecosystem in the greater South. So um, now let's look at how, let's, look, let's talk about our startup pipeline. So basically TTA support startups, um, local and international through to, two main channels. First, uh, through our accelerator partners and through the participation in exhibitions, which I will explain in detail a little bit later. So TTA is currently working with nine world-class accelerator partners. For our outbound programs, uh, we work with the prestigious accelerator like uh, Skydeck Berkeley. We also work alongside TCA, the Canadian Technology Accelerator and the French Tech Taipei to establish stronger ties between our sub ecosystems with those in Canada and France. Uh, so another way we support our startup is by leading them to take part in local and international exhibitions for media exposure, as well as to promote business and collaboration opportunities. Uh, for major exhibitions, um, overseas exhibitions like CES, for example, we just actually just came back from CES um, 2023. Um, this year we led 96 startups there. Um, so uh, like we, we provide our startup with comprehensive support to help them achieve maximum results, including pre-exhibition boot camps, media coverages before, during, and after the exhibitions. Uh, and we also have uh, post-exhibition roadshows. So as you can see in this photo, uh, the startups joining the exhibitions through TTA have their boots in the beautifully designed TTA pavilion. So not only does this prevent us smaller startups from being drowned in the sea of startups, it creates more impact and attracts more media coverage. Uh, we organize community events and workshops on a regular basis, be it online, in-person or hybrid, to provide startups with the opportunity to present themselves and to build the networks they need to thrive. We believe that strong community can create, a, can create bigger impact, which lead to the development of a more robust startup ecosystem. So overall, to date, we have supported over 950 startups, local and international. We have helped startups raise over 500, uh, 7 million US dollars, and we have facilitated over 200 collaboration projects with our corporate partners. And that wraps up my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And if you need to reach me, uh, I'll leave my email uh, in the chat box if I'm allowed to do that. And back to you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Yo. Thank you for um, talking more about TTA and Taiwan as always. I'm sure a lot of people got to know more about Taiwan that they didn't know about. So um, as Yo said, feel free to email them or even message startup link. We'll make sure that any questions you have will be forwarded to TTA. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. So um, now we're, we're still going to stay in Asia, but a little bit um, closer to Europe. Um, we, we will be finding out more about the other startup ecosystem. Um, 
through um, Sir Nigar, who is the senior consultant for ASAN Service, which is the state agency for public service and social innovation in the Republic of Azerbaijan. So a few things about Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is currently um, 85th in the world, and some interesting verticals are software and data, um, and social and leisure, and also fintech. Um, Nigar, could you raise your hand so we can promote you as a panelist? So I think it's okay, we can move on. Um, we will go back to Azerbaijan in a bit. Um, so now we're traveling all the way back to Australia and um, get, to get to know more about the Gold Coast startup ecosystem. So our presenter will be um, Sharon who is the executive director for the Gold Coast Innovation Hub. Um, Gold Coast is currently eighth in Australia, 367th in the world, and they're excelling in FinTech and software and data. Okay. Um, now let me see. Okay. Okay. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Hi, lovely to be here. Great, yeah. So thank you. Um, you can share your. Uh, we can begin when you're ready. Um, and let me know if you need any technical support. <laughs> sure. Share screen. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to get my presentation to appear. There it is. And we see it now. Thank you. And uh, that. full screen. Okay. Um, so hi everyone. My name is Sharon Honeywell. Um, I am presenting today as the CEO of the Gold Coast Innovation Hub. Um, but I'm really presenting today as a founder that has built a tech startup from the Gold Coast, scaled it internationally, and we had an exit last year. And so through that journey, um, I've come on board, um, or through that journey, we established a Gold Coast Innovation Hub. And so I guess I'm sharing from you today from a, from a founder's perspective on what's so wonderful about the Gold Coast. So the Gold Coast is a city. A lot of you won't be aware of it. Um, most people, when they think of Australia, think about Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, but the Gold Coast is actually an absolutely stunning city. Uh, we are the sixth largest city in Australia. Uh, we have 57 kilometres of beautiful beaches. Uh, we have sunshine 300 days of the year. We have 260 kilometres of na navigatable waterways. So behind our main city, which you can see in the picture, there's all these beautiful waterways that string behind it. And we also have a four and a half hectare, oh, four point, sorry, 4,524 4, hectares of World Heritage listed rainforest that sit at the back of our city. So it's an absolutely beautiful spot. And because it's been such a, because it's such a beautiful spot, uh, for a very long time, uh, the economy on the Gold Coast was fueled by tourism. Um, but around about 10 years ago, um, we decided, or there was a decision made by both people living on the Gold Coast and by a proactive council, um, that we should try and uh, and and diversify the economy um, and to bring more technology companies. So, um, so the Gold Coast, as I said, is the sixth largest city uh, overall in Australia. It's the largest regional city in Australia. Um, and we've absolutely boomed during COVID. Um, now that when, as soon as people um, in the Southern states moved into a work from home type arrangement, many, many people who'd been planning on retiring to the Gold Coast one day uh, decided to, uh, to, to get up here and start living their best life. So we've had a huge amount of interstate migration to the Gold Coast in the last two years. Now the Gold Coast has actually always been uh, the capital of entrepreneurship in Australia. We have the highest level of entrepreneurship. We have an average of 2,700 uh, 2, new businesses starting on the Gold Coast each year, which is about seven per day. And there's currently over 76,000 businesses registered on the Gold Coast. Now, what we came to realize um, is that 
even though we have the, one of the highest levels of entrepreneurship, uh, around 20% of people of people of working age on the Gold Coast uh, have a business. Most of those businesses were being run um, as sole traders or people that were trying to just create themselves a job. So the job of the startup ecosystem really in those early years, about 10 years ago, was about trying to um, change the, the perception of business on the Gold Coast um, from in creating a job to actually creating a business that can employ people. So we took a look at the entire startup life cycle from com people coming up with ideas um, and sort of and had a look at how they sort of progress through those ideas and get to their first few customers. And then we looked at where the gap was to growth. And we recognize that there's this gap after people get their first few customers. And if we can't assist them to see a vision of growing larger, um, to uh, if we can't give them the knowledge and experience from people that have grown bigger businesses before, um, if they don't have people there to support them and make them accountable to these bigger goals that they have, if they don't have the right connections, and most importantly, if they don't have the right funding models behind them, then they never end up getting to a stage of growth. So the Gold Coast Innovation Hub, uh, which I um, was a co-founder of, uh, was founded uh, in 2017, so just over five years ago, um, to help people, to help, help bridge this um, barrier to growth and get more businesses um, getting out on that other side into a growth phase. Um, so the Gold Coast predominantly what makes us quite different from a, uh, from a lot of the other areas is we're very much a founder-driven ecosystem but we're exceptionally well supported by a very proactive local and state government. Um, we have great education networks. There's four top class universities on the Gold Coast. Uh, there's a TAFE and there's multiple um, other educational institutions that all work with the startup ecosystem. We provide on internship opportunities and opportunities for those uh, for job placements. Uh, we have a growing investor community. So in the last couple of years, and so a lot of the companies that we've assisted across that growth gap have uh, grown and scaled uh, uh, significantly and have now moved into, and have some of them have been acquired, uh, and they've now moved into that investment and reinvesting back into the ecosystem. We have great transport links on the Gold Coast. We've got uh, two international airports, one on the Gold Coast and one in Brisbane. Both are within 50 minutes drive from the main heart of the Gold Coast world-class infrastructure, low cost of living, and a great give first culture. Um, the Gold Coast is interesting. It does not have a CBD. It's a very long city because it runs along coastline, but what we do have is these amazing precincts. So look in here on the screen, we've got a, a sports precinct. We have a movie um, and creative precinct. We have an arts precinct, and probably the most uh, impressive and the most interesting one to uh, the people on this call would be our health and knowledge precinct. Um, so here's a little zoom in on the health and knowledge precinct. It's a cluster of uh, hospitals, um, of uh, the Griffith University, of co-working spaces and other uh, organisations that can help to commercialise uh, knowledge and, uh, and technology for the health sector. Um, and so this has been a phenomenal uh, commitment from the state and uh, local government um, that has seen some fantastic innovations growing and it's becoming a, quite a large segment of our community. So these are some of the growing sectors on the Gold Coast. Uh, software as a service is big. We've had lots of companies um, growing from there. Uh, FinTech, RedTech, uh, health and sports tech, obviously with the health and knowledge precinct. Um, and as a little note, uh, for the past three, in the past three years, the Gold Coast Hub and its members and alumni have raised over $30 million in early stage funding, scaled into 130 countries worldwide and have been involved in over $100 million of uh, merger and acquisition activity. So if you're interested in coming to the Gold Coast, uh, let the Gold Coast Innovation Hub be your guide. We will connect you uh, with the resources that you need. Uh, we, will, we will help you to, uh, to settle here and uh, we would love to have you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for sharing to us about Gold Coast and um, what okay. entrepreneurs and investors can uh, expect if they choose to move there. Um, yeah. And, as Sharon said, if you have any questions, feel free to message them, go to their website, or you can also message us at Stars of Link, and we'll forward any inquiries to them. Thank you again, Sharon. I hope you have a, a great evening. Okay, um, yeah, so now we're traveling all the way to Europe, and to get to know more about the Plus Startup ecosystem, you'll be hearing from Christina from Startup Plus 
So Plotslov is um, currently yeah. third in Europe and 187 in the world. Um, they're excelling in hardware and IoT education. Yeah. And hi, Christina. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Christina, you're on mute, I think. So, um, as I said, if you have any questions, you can put it on the Q&A um, and we'll forward it to the ecosystem developers, the locations that you're interested in. Or if you have any general questions to start the link, feel free to leave them as well on the Q&A and we'll make sure to answer them either during this event or after. Okay. And for those that are just joining us, if you miss anything, there will be a recording sent after after this whole event. Um, I think um, Christine is yeah. connecting to audio. Yes, yeah, so the recording will be sent after. So if you miss the first half of the event, we'll make sure to send it to you. And we also have another session later at 3 p.m. Okay. Yes, I, we can hear you now, Christina. Great. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Thank you for the trouble. No problem. Okay, you can start and you can share your screen as well for the six minute presentation. I think you're on mute again. Can you hear me now? Yes. And can you see my screen? No, you can't see your screen. Can you see yes, we can now? see it now. Yes. Okay. Sorry for double problem. So once again, uh, my name is Kristina. Today I'm really happy to present you startup ecosystem in Wrocław, Poland. So the third biggest city in Poland. Uh, we are a capital of Warsaw region, and as you can see on the map, we are located in southwest very close to Berlin, Warsaw, Prague, and Vienna. They are within four hours drive. We have over 670,000 inhabitants, uh, plus additionally over 200,000 Ukrainian refugees since the war outbreak. And with 29 universities and over 100,000 students, we are the third largest academic hub. Today, I represent not only Startup Wrocław, uh, but also Wrocław Agglomeration Development Agency, which we are a part of. It's an organization created in 2005 to promote the region and attract foreign direct investments. We are owned by 33 communes, including the city of Wrocław. And in the Startup Wrocław team, we have three people. Besides me, there's my colleagues Matze and Paulina, who is the head of our team. Uh, together, we organize and animate our local startup ecosystem. We organize and support local business and tech events. We network and try to connect startups with large companies, investors, incubators, accelerators, academia, and media. We promote Wrocław based startups on our website and social media, and also provide businesses with valuable content and knowledge. Each year, we publish reports on different economic sectors. 
and we organize and take part in trade missions. Uh, in Wrocław, since the establishment of our organization, we've had over 250 FDI projects, which created more than 110,000 new jobs. Right now, we have 60,000 employees in 208 business services centers. That's about our business, business in Wrocław in general. And now let's focus a bit about on our startup ecosystem. Uh, currently, we are the startup ecosystem number one, actually, with the biggest number of Polish startups registered. 21% uh, of all Polish tech companies are registered in our region. Uh, we have over 250 startups, and we are placed third in Poland in the number of job opportunities. Uh, here on the slide, you can see the most common fields uh, that we have startups uh, we have well-developed infrastructure that's ready to uh, host startups in Wrocław. We have more than 50 incubators and co-working spaces, 100 R&D and IT centers, and over 50 accredited labs. If anyone was interested in them, we have all of them listed on our website. We've been quite successful lately. So here this slide is about our latest achievements. Uh, first of them, and quite the most important to us, is what I already mentioned before. Uh, we have the biggest number of registered startups in Poland. Uh, then, according to a report by uh, the room, we are first in Poland, second in Europe, and eighth worldwide as a rising star of technology hub. Uh, what's more, we are the most business-friendly city in Poland and second best prepared for the future. Uh, right now, I would like to say a few words about our projects and activities. First of them is our website, where we collect and gather the most important knowledge and events on what's happening in our startup ecosystem. So I really invite you all to check it out. Uh, then we organize and take our local startups with us to economic missions. We go to the biggest events in Europe uh, and not only. Here you can see that we went and we plan to go to a Web Summit or also Innovation Week or even MIPIM. We also every year publish reports on selected sectors. Last year we uh, covered a game dev industry in Wrocław and this year a new report will premiere in February about ICT industry. We partner in a lot of events and try to contribute as much as we can. Uh, here on the slide, you can see some of the local and national ones and also international ones such as uh, World Summit, Disruptors and InfoShare. Uh, we not only uh, partner with the events, we also create our own ones. Uh, so here you can see the first of them, Startup Roadmap Evolution. It's a conference targeted especially on startups. It happens every year, either in May or in June. And always we try to cover the most topic and trendy topics in startup world. So last year we focused on a topic of impact and sustainability. Uh, next even bigger event we have made in Wrocław. It's actually a three in one event. We have conference, expo, and networking. Uh, last year we gathered over 1,000 participants and uh, featured more than 40 startups and 20 speakers on the stage. It happens every year in October. So if anyone would like to visit Wrocław, I would say October is the best time. And you should also come to meet in Wrocław. Uh, and here are the projects that we want to start and get rolling this year. First of them is Startup Raw Meetups. So a series of meetups for everyone interested in startups, even on a smaller scale. And second one, we want to publish a startup, uh, Wrocław Startup Guidebook. So uh, guides of all Startup Wrocław infrastructure and like some tips how to start your own startup. And that's everything from me. Thank you very much. And follow our Startup Wrocław LinkedIn if you're interested in Wrocław. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Christina. Thank you for presenting us uh, more about the Thoughts of Startup Ecosystem. And like as they said, you can follow them on LinkedIn. And if you go on the events that they mentioned, I'm sure you'll be able to catch them there as well. Thank, Thank you. you, Christina. So now we're we're going to a neighbor of um, of Fatsov and we'll we'll learn more about the um, resilient ecosystem of Ukraine. Um, so you will be hearing from Pablo, um, who is the CEO of Ukraine Startup Fund. So little things about the Ukrainian startup ecosystem. In last year's report, Ukraine was ranked 12 in Eastern Europe and just the F worldwide. They're very strong in marketing and sales, software and data, and also social and leisure on the part of Hello, Pablo. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, thank you so much, Christine. Can I share my screen? Yes, definitely. Fantastic. So, hi, my name is Pablo Kartashov, and I am CEO of Ukrainian Startup Fund. Uh, Ukrainian Startup Fund is uh, an entry point, main entry point in the Ukrainian startup ecosystem, where a government implemented agency established in 2019. And actually, for three years of uh, our operational activity, uh, we've uh, done a lot. So basically, we have several uh, grant programs. Uh, uh, you, you see numbers on the screen. So altogether, we disbursed six and a half million of US dollars. And uh, according to recent surveys, uh, we have uh, been uh, the biggest angel investor in uh, Ukraine. So covering uh, half of the deals uh, last year, uh, actually we're talking about numbers of the deals, not, not the amounts. So uh, we implemented several grant programs. So ba ba basic program is 25 and 50K for pre seed and seed stage startups. And uh, more than 250 startups were selected and funded. And pro probably uh, one of the, our biggest value is we have a transparent governance and high quality selection process because all the experts which are part of USF, they are outsourced, they are independent, uh, they represent the market. So it's not our internal stuff. That's why I believe the system uh, works in the best way. Uh, additionally, we have uh, acceleration program. Again, all the accelerators uh, you see on the screen, they've been accredited by USF, and uh, we're not doing acceleration by ourselves, but uh, instead we're using uh, actually accredited accelerator services. As outsource, we just provide financing for startups to participate in different programs. Uh, Another program is innovation vouchers. So basically we are covering all the major uh, tech events worldwide, uh, like uh, CES, like Web Summit, uh, S6SW, uh, Startup Grind Slash, uh, TechCrunch, and many, many others. So last year we also did uh, Paris Viva Technology. We did the uh, Tech Barbecue in uh, Copenhagen. And this year we also actually uh, attending many new locations like Barcelona, like London and many, many others. So what we are doing, we are providing grant to startups. We are forming a delegation to participate. And also we are preparing tech ecosystem stand. Uh, so we're covering uh, all the expenses, uh, including accommodation and travel costs. And we are representing uh, the Ukrainian tech ecosystem worldwide. And I believe this is a very effective program because we have uh, two basic opportunities. First of all, this is a good, good chance for startups to raise money. And secondly, uh, they are getting the best PR coverage uh, they could get. Uh, and last but not least, uh, obviously, a life had changed in Ukraine uh, last year in February 24th when uh, Russian soldiers uh, invaded Ukraine. So basically, uh, we put all our programs on standby and uh, we introduced new program. It's uh, called Dual Use Projects Program. Uh, the projects in this uh, uh, sense, they are uh, not only defense and non-defense, but uh, uh, they more, uh, we define whether the project could be used during the war and post-war modernization. So, for example, 
uh, we defined uh, five uh, main pillars like defense, infrastructure, cybersecurity, education, and healthcare. And we're trying to define which uh, decisions or technologies or startups uh, could actually help uh, Ukrainian uh, state, Ukrainian army, and uh, just Ukrainian people to uh, live during the war and uh, to help us during post-war modernization. For example, um, each platform for education of people which were uh, relocated, especially students and uh, pupils, uh, it would be actually considered by us as a dual use because it, it's very helpful during the war time. The same story with health tech projects and uh, obviously defense projects uh, is uh, number one, uh, our focus. And now, so basically uh, what are uh, our plans for next year? In 2022, we hold a lot of different uh, events and the special emphasis was uh, put on defense and deep tech uh, uh, spheres. So in defense, we did several hackathons. We are closely cooperate with Army of Drones, uh, which is part of the uh, Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. So basically, it's uh, our attempt to uh, provide the uh, Ukrainian army with uh, uh, sufficient decision in uh, UAV. And also we did a drone demo day uh, more than 150 companies were participated. So now we have several projects which are ongoing and which are already cooperating with the army. And also we hold a demining hackathon. So uh, it's uh, another our attempt to find a appropriate decision for uh, army needs. So next uh, year plan uh, looks like uh, the following slide. Uh, what we have now, we have uh, actually uh, all-in-one decision. So we've got our own platform, uh, which are connecting uh, startups, connecting uh, innovators, uh, connecting companies, because previously we did also uh, corporate innovations, trying to match uh, big uh, corporates with startups. Uh, afterwards, we have our internal unit. Uh, we have a uh, huge uh, internal capacity. So we have uh, our staff and we're using experts as uh, outsource uh, for data and analysis. And uh, what we have as an outcome, we've got access to finance, we've got accelerations, we've got sandbox uh, in each pillar. We have uh, R&D. Uh, currently, we're cooperating with, with 50 plus universities and institutes. Uh, and basically, last year, we already introduced deep tech uh, direction as uh, our priority. So it uh, stays uh, our priority for, next, for this year. And basically, we started cooperation with the European Innovation Council. Uh, we started cooperation with the European Institute on uh, uh, of technologies and innovations, and we did several events with them together. So we are continue this uh, cooperation, and uh, we are open to any kind of cooperation worldwide. So basically, uh, we uh, open uh, to uh, possible joint projects. Uh, we have a very strong and uh, resilient community right now in Ukraine. So I believe we have. The biggest challenge is the war, uh, which actually startup uh, faced. So uh, I presume it's a good impetus to become stronger, uh, to become more effective and uh, to become more successful. So we are open to any kind of proposals. And uh, obviously you will find my contacts uh, on the USF website. It's USF, Ukrainian Startup Fund, .com .ua. Uh, So Yes, feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you for um, introducing more about the current status of the Ukraine startup ecosystem. Um, and if anyone else is interested, you can go to their site at Ukraine startup to get more information. You can also send us a message. Go forward that question to them. So thank you, Pablo. 
So now we're, we're traveling, um, we're staying in Europe, but more to Western Europe, and we'll get to know more about the, the startup ecosystem from Carl Gauchi, who is the business development manager of Tempish. A bit about Malta. So Malta is currently um, 59th um, in the world, and they're excelling in industries like fintech, social and leisure, and also software and data. Hi, Carl. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Catherine. Hi, good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, I'll start sharing my screen. Um, and we can start with the presentation. Catherine, can you confirm that uh, you can uh, you can see my we screen? Can see, we can see the screen, Carl, but we see the notes as well on the side, so it's not full screen at the moment. All right, so give me a, a moment, please. Uh, is that is that better, Catherine? Yes, it's perfect, Carl. Right. Here, six okay, minutes. So, back. so um, uh, thank you for uh, for the opportunity once again. So I'll just get to it because uh, um, obviously presenting our startup ecosystem in six minutes is a bit of a difficult endeavor. So to start. Um, I represent Tech.mt. Tech.mt uh, Tech .mt is a public-private partnership based in Malta. Um, for all of um, you who do not know, Malta is a small uh, island in the middle of the Mediterranean, just underneath um, Italy and uh, Sicily, and uh, it's uh, pretty much very close in proximity between North Africa and uh, Central Europe. Um, so Tech.mt um, focuses on promoting uh, Malta as a quality and creative tax savvy country. And we aim to position ourselves as um, one of the most favorable Mediterranean restrictions for companies to slap shop um, when it comes to tech. Um, our uh, entity is based on four pillars, those of promotion, innovation, talent, and assistance. Um, now I would like to discuss with you what makes Malta um, an attractive jurisdiction um, for startups to set up shop. Um, uh, so, um, so Malta um, currently ranks sixth out of all 27 member states uh, when it comes to the Digital Economy and Society Index, uh, which ranks um, different facets like um, the, the communications, digital infrastructure, um, uh, education and so on. Um, uh, Malta um, uh, also is uh, ranked quite positively when it comes to GDP projections and economic outlooks. And uh, Malta uh, continues to show positive, uh, continuous po positive credit, credit ratings throughout recent years. Um, again, Malta is strategically lo located, as I was saying, between the Mediterranean and is a direct link to North Africa, and one of the, the, the world's largest developing um, countries, which provides lo loads and loads of opportunities for startups as well, based in Malta, to be able to export the services to other um, countries as well. Malta also boasts a highly um, skilled digital workforce and a robust nationwide digital infrastructure. Um, this is to recap um, that Malta, um, the, 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 the two most, um, I would say, um, uh, better strengths are the state of the art communications infrastructure and strong regulations that encourage for direct investment and do not stifle um, innovation. So they are there to help startups continue to grow and flourish. Um, our uh, so our ecosystem Tech.mt is supported by a wide ecosystem, which includes foreign offices and embassies, which help us in identifying opportunities for tech companies based in Malta to export their um, their technological solutions to other um, to other countries. Um, local tech um, uh, companies as well that have highly innovative solutions um, that uh, can. Um, uh, pro that can export these uh, more as well is um, 
uh, backed up by regulators such as the MDIA, MFSA, um, and uh, backed up by science and technology councils, academia, um, startups, investors, uh, chambers, and our foreign offices as well. And um, this all makes up our ecosystem, which we are um, able to better give uh, an end product to our uh, uh, the, the, the startups that we service. Um, so next, we'll have a look at the regulations in Mosa that, um, as I was saying, they're there to help and encourage investment and encourage innovation and not there to stifle, of course, innovation within tech. Um, uh, to have a look here, uh, MOTA um, has regulator, MOTA, the MOTA Digital Innovation Authority, um, and ser um, se several acts that we have are the in uh, Innovation Technology and Services Act, the ITAS Act, Virtual Financial Assets Act, and the Strategy and Vision for AI in MOTA 2030, which aims to create a roadmap for uh, more to gain a strategic competitive advantage in becoming a, a leader in AI. And finally, the technology assurance sandbox, which enables, you know, um, to, to set certain standards um, and give companies certification that um, certifies that they have uh, passed the sandbox and are able to uh, provide a superior product to their end clients. Um, so this is the value that Tech TechMT brings. Um, we have knowledge about funding, incentives, and opportunities. Um, so we're able to guide um, startups with, uh, with the right um, funding that fit their product or service or their end goal. Um, we have um, great working relationships with all the, the, the entities that administer these funding opportunities uh, on behalf of the Maltese government, such as MIMPO, the Motor De Development Bank, Mult Enterprise. Um, uh, MCST and others, um, those who would like to learn more about this and how they can support their startups through these funding opportunities. Um, uh, towards the end of the presentation, I will be sharing our contact information as well. Um, we're able to provide connections throughout the world and also within Mota, um, also advice how to set up your company, uh, access to global markets. Um, we also do market reports, and market assessment on behalf of companies. Um, to um, learn more about the market and what it uh, what it, it 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 entails, I'll go a little bit uh, over this a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, we participate in local and inter international events. Um, I'll mention this is a little bit in detail later on. Guidance and support in any way uh, possible, like company formation. Um, and we also have a pro bono consultation initiative aimed at startups, which gives high quality advice from industry players um, on number, uh, a, a set number of, um, of criteria. Um, and promotion, of course, we, we're there to promote companies and help them to continue to grow. Um, I'll have a look very briefly at the funding opportunities. Um, for the sake of today's um, uh, cohort, I would say I decided to focus on um, these um, opportunities that you can see on your screen. Um, obviously, today we don't have the time to go over them, but we have the Business Development 2021 Change to Grow Scheme, uh, Business Reengineering, and on the next slide you will see the Startup Finance and the Business Start as well, which are directly aimed at startups. Um, as I said, uh, I would be very happy to set up um, meetings with those who are interested and uh, go, over, uh, go over these in further detail after understanding um, what your company um, does and your end goal as well. Um, these are uh, other um, funding opportunities from uh, the Motor Development Bank. Then we have others from uh, MCST and then th there are um, other opportunities as well. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier on um, that um, we have a strategic partnership which is aimed at giving pro bono consultation to tech companies. Um, and uh, um, uh, basically, this is giving support to those who um, uh, do not have the financial resources to employ a consultant from their own. So uh, TechMT is taking this initiative together with established key industry players and as you can see uh, on your screen, their uh, testimonies speak for themselves. 
um, and startups are uh, very, very satisfied with the quality of uh, consultation given locally. Um, uh, we have over 35 um, uh, companies that uh, have given us uh, hours. You can see them on your screen there. And um, next, um, I'd like to discuss the, the events that TechMT organizes. We organize the Lights of the E Business Awards and Valeta Tech Summit, which are local events in Malta. Um, last year, we had two uh, Valeta Tech Summit events uh, branded under um, uh, the, the, we, sorry, we uh, explore the, the facet of IoT and the creative side of the digital economy. Um, the Business Awards is a yearly celebration of the achievements of local tech companies. And this year, it will be the 12th rendition of these events. Um, next, um, I'd like to discuss a little bit more about the research that we do on behalf of companies to uh, keep up to date with emerging technology and the right market conditions um, for technologies to, to flourish. So we take it upon ourselves to do this research, um, to gather insight, uh, market insight on behalf of, uh, of startups, which then they can use to their advantage. Um, uh, on your screen, you can see uh, our contact details, and I urge you to get in touch with us uh, for further information. We'd be very happy to uh, have a private meeting, have a chat, and discuss how we can be assistance, be of assistance to you. Uh, thank you, Startup Blink and Catherine, for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing with us the, the current state of the Malta startup ecosystem. And I'm sure if they have any questions, they'll go to uh, the Empty website. Or if you if you also have other questions, you can also send to Startup Blink and we'll forward it to the software. Thank you, Carl. And um, I hope to see you next time. So. Okay, so now we're, we're moving back to Asia, traveling back to Asia to get to know more about the Philippine startup ecosystem. So we'll hear, we'll hear from Ms. Cabrera, who is the Chief of Benchmarking and Promotions Division of the DICT. Uh, Philippines is currently sixth in Southeast Asia, the seventh in the world, and excelling in industries such as education, energy, and IoT, and also food tech. Hi, Ms. Yvette, thank you for joining us today. Hello, um, good evening from the Philippines. So uh, thank you for this opportunity. So let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so greetings everyone. So on behalf of our director, Ms. Emily Lou Delphine, uh, I would like to thank uh, Startup Link for this uh, invitation to present our initiatives in the development of the Philippine startup ecosystem. So for everyone's information, of course, you know, the Philippines is known for, has always been known or recognized for its uh, beaches and mountains. So one may be curious to the situation of our ecosystem of startups here. And I'm very pleased to showcase our Filipino pride, not just for its uh, sceneries, but for its, but for its uh, people. So with the vast digital advancement in the country over the years, the DICT is bound to implement projects that aid in the country's digital transformation. So in terms of digital transformation, the DICT has been implementing activities in order to provide a fast, affordable, and reliable internet connectivity in the Philippines. For instance, building the national digital infrastructure will have the Filipinos utilize the digital technologies to effectively participate in the digital economy. Moreover, pursuant to the Philippine Republic Act Number no. 11337, otherwise known as the Innovative Startup Act, the DICT, together with the Department of Trade and Industry and the Department of Science and Technology, is mandated to foster inclusive growth through an innovative economy by streamlining government and non-government initiatives in both local and international spheres to create new jobs and opportunities improve production, and advance innovation and trade in the country. In this slide, you can see the number of key players in the Philippine startup ecosystem. The notable uh, sectors are e-commerce and fintech. This is very apparent as two of the unicorns that the country has are fintech startups, which are Mint, more, uh, more known as Gcash in the Philippines, and Voyager Innovations, 
or more known as Maya in the Philippines. One startup to take a note of is Kumu, part of the e-commerce sector. So we have to be keen on which sectors will continue to grow and thrive here in our country and analyze trends moving forward. Currently, the Philippines has 1,000 startups and we are working on our best efforts to not only help increase the number of active startups in the country, but to also improve the quality of startups founded and supported. In this regard, the DICT uh, values collaboration and is building various partnerships with local and international startup enablers. To, to guide the growing startup ecosystem in the country, our department, the Department of uh, Inter Information and Communications Technology, has developed its uh, startup program under the Philippine Startup Development Plan called uh, Digital Startup Development and Acceleration Program. We can see here uh, the, the different uh, components uh, uh, and efforts and initiatives that our team under the ICT Industry Development Bureau has. So currently, uh, our program has five main components, namely scale or the startup community and local enhancement in simple words. And it's the program startup mapping activities. It has mapped a total of 21 locations last year, seven of which are in col collaboration with Startup Accelerator or Incubator. Roadmaps and reports on the ecosystem are, were uh, released publicly recently, but for, in, for your information, local startup ecosystems are relatively still in the nascent stage. So another component is race or raising awareness and inspiring the startup ecosystem. It's our program for uh, creating awareness in, uh, conducted in different regions. It is the base program in enhancing the basic knowledge and interest in startups. Under this component is the Philippine Startup Week, which we conduct every November of uh, every year. In, uh, which is uh, in partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry and the Department of Science and Technology and was recently concluded in November last year. RACE has had a total of, uh, had a total of 81 sub-activities last year. Next is our Step Up or Startup Tailored Enhancement and People Focused Upscaling Program. So it was launched last year and it was able to pilot its program in one of the uh, uh, southern uh, Luzon uh, regions in the country. So nine startups are about to graduate this month under this uh, acceleration program. Under this also is the Philippine Startup Challenge, which is startup pitching competition uh, wherein uh, we, had, we received 291 entries nationwide last year. Next component is Startup Grant Fund, which is our initiative to provide funding to early stage startups in the proof of concept, prototype, and minimum viable startup stage. It is expected to open its call for applications in the first quarter of this year. And lastly, we have developed the Startup Philippines website, which is a repository site uh, further developed to become the national startup platform accessible to everyone. So uh, our, one initiative under these components to create a one-stop shop to ease the process of business registration and other matters that startups may deal with. So here you will see some of the activities we had conducted last year uh, and uh, we, uh, that we, uh, we can promise this 2023 is that uh, the advancement of our commitment to improve the Philippine startup ecosystem. So Filipinos are talented and creative, and to make entrepreneurship attractive in Philippine, Philippine society, emphasizing technology as an integral part of an improved ecosystem with an improved infrastructure is important. The implementation of the Philippine Startup Development Program under the Innovative Startup Act strengthened the initiatives and support services for the Philippine startup industry. As such, our department incessantly provides avenues and activities to enhance the knowledge, understanding, and capabilities of Filipino technopreneurs through its uh, startup enrichment activities. 
strategies to accelerate the potential of Filipino startups includes uh, in ensuring government efforts to promote technopreneurship, build partnerships, investments, and quality of startups being founded. A future-oriented mindset means to be more global and furthermore, for more, a more digitally inclusive Philippines, we believe that encouraging innovation and collaboration will go a long way. In the end, seeing the, uh, seeing the thriving number of Filipino startups also indicates how government efforts have been worthwhile. And this commitment is all in the name of public service. So to be familiar with the other initiatives of the department, as well as our bureau, you may visit our official Facebook page, the ICT Industry Development Bureau and the Department of Information and Communications Technology. So once again, thank you for this opportunity. And from the Philippines, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Yvette. Thank you for sharing with us more information about the Philippine startup ecosystem and what to expect um, with the ecosystem for this year. Um, if you have any questions about the Philippines or anything about uh, coordinating with the ICT, please feel free to message them or also message them. Thank you. Hope you have a great day. So now we're we're traveling back to Europe and we're going to hear more about the Berlin startup ecosystem. So we will hear from Anna, who is the project manager for Startup International at um, Berlin Partners. Hi, Anna. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Good morning from Berlin. <laughs> I'm trying to share my presentation. Can you see my full screen now? Uh, we can we can see the not the full presentation. We see the PowerPoint software. Does it look good now? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. So hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good e evening, wherever you are in this world. And uh, thank you also Startup Link for the great organization. I already learned um, a lot today from all my fellows and from you. Um, and now I want to present to you Berlin and Berlin Partner and why you should uh, come um, to our city. Um, maybe to my person, I'm responsible for the internationalization of startups, so I'm sure I will see some of you um, in the next uh, upcoming uh, events and fairs. Um, what is Berlin Partner? Berlin Partner is the business development agency of the city and the state of Berlin. Um, we help companies and also startups to launch, innovate, expand, and secure um, economic future in Berlin. We are private-public partnership, so that means um, uh, we are mainly funded um, by the government, but we also have a private network uh, of Berlin-based companies that also pay a fee, but then get extra services. But otherwise, um, all these services you will see on the next slide. Um, uh, all, all the Berlin-based companies, or if you're planning to uh, expand or relocate to Berlin, you can um, use. So we help you to, for example, find the right location if you're looking for an office space in Berlin. Uh, right now, this is really a big hurdle for a lot of um, the companies um, because, uh, yeah, space is uh, tight. Uh, we will help you to find the right um public uh, funding and finance uh, opportunities, which we have here. Uh, we also have a sustainability service, which is quite new, uh, where we support you in how to act more sustainable. Uh, climate change is a thing right now and will not go away anytime soon. Um, we also have a great innovation service. So if you're looking for any research and development institutions to collaborate, uh, our managers are happy to connect you um, then we have the talent service, which is a big issue. Um, if you need support in visa uh, requests or also to find um, employees, 
then uh, our team is here for you. And for me personally, the best service we have is the international service. So if you're eager to go abroad, then I'm your contact person and support you uh, in that process. Um, then some more facts about Berlin. Uh, I, I added a slide about the numbers from Startup Flink, and I think Berlin is, uh, has a quite good standing there. Uh, we are the um, number one in Germany, uh, counting third in Western Europe and 12 worldwide. So um, I think that's a pretty good standing. And our top industries, they match, you will see on the next slide, um, our energy and environment, fintech is a big thing. So many people assume Frankfurt is <laughs> actually um, the go-to market for fintech, but we are also really strong in marketing and sales. Um, maybe you have heard um, of some of our best uh, startups or most successful startups, uh, ResearchGate, Zeotap or Taxfix, um, but we have many more uh, that came from Berlin. Um, so why you should come, I mean, what most startups are looking for is money and <laughs> network. Uh, actually, we have now seen a big decrease in the venture capital that is flowing to Berlin. In 2021, it was over 10 billion. So we were really happy we reached this mark, but now we see a decrease. Um, but I think this is a worldwide trend um, which we are facing. Um, but nonetheless, we um, it's still the most venture capital you can get uh, in Germany. Um, what we also see, we have a lot of unicorns, um, 22 currently uh, in Berlin, and they provide a lot of jobs for us. If you're looking for talent, there are many young people living in Berlin. Uh, English is really not a problem. Many people here uh, speak fluently English. English is becoming more and more often um, the company language. And we also do have a lot of serial founders. So I think um, but what you can see is from the unicorns, many people that used to work for a startup or founded a startup, they found again another startup because the ecosystem is there, the, the investors are there, um, and also the governmental support. And here you can also see the top industries where the investments are flowing. So we're really strong in mobility, e-commerce, uh, maybe you have heard of Zalando, uh, software and analytics, and then actually this is new from 2022, FinTech and Intratech are really, really strong. Um, but I think my six minutes are up already, so happy to connect. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to message me via mail or add me on LinkedIn, and then happy to help you out. And we also have a, a LinkedIn channel and a newsletter, um, which I also really recommend. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for a um, very insightful presentation about the state of the Berlin startup ecosystem. Um, if anyone has questions, as Anna said, feel free to drop them a message either on LinkedIn or on their email that you see on the screen at the moment. Thank you, Anna. I hope you have thank a great you. day. Um, yeah, so now we're we're okay. in the cold for a bit and we're going to a more warmer climate and get to know more about the Sri Lanka startup ecosystem. We'll be hearing from Sashindra, who is the Associate Chief Digital Econo Economy yeah. Officer of ICT Agency of Sri Lanka. Yeah. A few things about um, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is currently third in South Asia and ranked 90th um, worldwide. Uh, some interesting industries are marketing and sales, e-commerce and retail, also software and um, data. Hi, Sashindra. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, great to be here. Thank you for this uh, opportunity and thank you to all those uh, who presented uh, today. We learned a lot uh, listening to the great stories of ecosystem. It's great to come after Berlin as well, which is another city that uh, Sri Lanka has uh, many engagements with, especially through Asia Berlin. Um, so uh, as a country, um, we are glad to be part of the startup Blink uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, and uh, we hope to have this continue this engagement for, for many years. Uh, so what you see here is uh, 
Um, you might think it's paradise. Uh, it's just it's Sri Lanka. This is how it looks like uh, for those uh, who might have traveled and uh, for those who haven't do travel. It's not one of the uh, best destinations in the world uh, for travel. And just introducing myself uh, and the organization I, I work with. Uh, so I work as the Associate Chief Digital Economy Officer at the ICT Agency of Sri Lanka. And as the image shows, uh, we are one of the most connected organizations in the ecosystem. Uh, and it, it goes around with many partnerships that we have, also the support that is provided by the startup team and the other teams of uh, ICTA uh, for the furtherance of this ecosystem. And ICTA is not only looking at startups, it's the main promotion agency which supports the growth of the digital economy of Sri Lanka. And as of 2021, we have uh, counted that it's uh, 4.37 of our GDP, which accounts to about 3.5 billion. Uh, and the tech industry in Sri Lanka, the ICT industry, we hit about 1.7 billion of export revenue uh, in 2021. And we also, as ICTA, our main, main job is to provide the data which is required for the ecosystem. Uh, and hence, uh, we have partnerships with uh, uh, likes like Startup Genome and Startup Blink. Uh, which, which is our newest partner. Sri Lanka has been a center of excellence for companies to set up operations for almost 20 years. Uh, these are some of the latest, uh, or HCL is some of the, one of the latest companies which set up uh, operations in Sri Lanka and growing to more than 2,000 people. The London Stock Exchange, Pearson, the, one of the greatest education providers, have set up operations. And we have about 120,000 workforce who are working for various companies who have set up shop in Sri Lanka, uh, utilizing the talent. Uh, and uh, we have been nominated as the number one uh, destination in terms of financial attractiveness by global service delivery uh, based in the UK. Also number one destination, which is financially attractive by the Kearney. And some of the recent accolades that we have won uh, is by Club Med and Kayak, that is to that is ranking us as one of the best destinations for digital nomads. And here we will see that uh, Sri Lanka is also the home for, for the world's best uh, co-working space, which is Hatch. And also we have won many awards given by SARC Startup Awards and the Global Startup Awards uh, in terms of startups, Niftron, Root Code, and also the Ecosystem Champion or Ecosystem Hero, uh, also uh, 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 award-winning destination, as you see. According to Startup Genome, our ecosystem value is 228 million. Uh, this is a 70% increase from 112 million, which was in last year. And our plan is to get to $1 billion of ecosystem value as soon as possible uh, in the next two years, actually, uh, if you put it into numbers. Currently on the Startup SL platform, Startup Sri Lanka platform, which uh, ICTA manages, we have 740 registered startups and Sri Lanka being an island, this is the distribution across the country of uh, startups. And predominantly in Sri Lanka, when I say startup, these are tech startups and tech enabled startups. And you'll see the offering, the breakdown of some of the uh, areas of technology that these startups work in AI, IoT, FinTech, e-commerce, so on and so forth. Uh, as a country, we are also connected. You see Impact Berlin as our partner. Uh, the EU, European Sri Lanka Innovation Partnership. So we are connected across the world. Uh, we have we are yet very open to connect to all the other ecosystem is presented as well, and we would really like to do that. In terms of talent, we have a focused approach of bridging the talent gap, which is there in terms of uh, the ecosystem demand. The companies that are setting up in Sri Lanka, the homegrown companies, uh, including the startups, we have a focus program on how we bridge the talent. So if you are looking at coming into Sri Lanka, we as ICTA, we invite you to connect with us because as I showed you, we are connected to the entire ecosystem and we can help you in all ways uh, possible. Some interesting things that we've done in the country is uh, we are working with the government uh, to make the government startup friendly. And these are some of the areas that we are working in. And recently we were able to launch uh, an alternative credit scoring framework 
working with banks, we were able to provide in Sri Lankan rupees 258 million without collateral to the startups in Sri Lanka. Another interesting project, which is the inclusive digital agriculture strategy that we are working with Gates Foundation. Like, likewise, we are working with many sectors, uh, tourism sector, health, education. So if you're in that space, do talk to us and we will see how we can partner uh, and, and uh, engage Sri Lankan ecosystem for your test bed to get into, se get it into this sector. As a tourism destination, for travel tech, this is a hotbed that a lot are looking at. Uh, I have uh, 50 minutes more, so I have 50 seconds more. I thank the organizers and please uh, do connect with me and my organization. We will help you set up in Sri Lanka and connect and, and be part of a great ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shashindra. Thank you for you know, introducing all of us more to the Sri Lanka startup ecosystem. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to them. Also, for some developers, I think we encourage everyone as well to connect if there are points of synergy between them. Okay. So now we're um, staying in Asia and staying in the warm climates to get to know more about the system of Penang. Um, we will be hearing from um, Seng, who is the Director of Ecosystem Development for Digital Penang. Hello, thank you for joining us today. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Seng Lim. I'm representing Digital Penang here from Malaysia. And I will be sharing uh, with everyone with regards to the uh, ecosystem in Penang specifically. Uh, this uh, allow me to share my screen. Okay, uh, just to confirm is can everybody can you see my screen, uh, Catherine? Yes, and we, we see it uh, as full screen. Okay, so uh, I will be sharing a bit more on Penang startup ecosystem. Uh, but before that, let me just go a bit bigger. At a national level in Malaysia, we are looking to become the top twenty global startup ecosystem by twenty thirty, and. Uh, the diagram there shows the vision of the country on how we intend to reach uh, that top 20 global startup ecosystem. And uh, also uh, the, at the country level, these are the, some of the technologies that uh, we hope to develop from the startup and, as well, and also technology companies that we would like to basically build nationally in our country. And now I just go down to Penang. Uh, Penang is basically uh, a high-tech island and we have uh, a lot of uh, technology parks and uh, we have companies like Intel, Moto Motorola and such uh, having a very strong hub here in Penang. Uh, overall, uh, our population is about 1.8 million with a very strong uh, literacy rate of 98.3%. And uh, we have over 45 years of cumulative industry uh, experience and intelligence in the state Penang. And uh, in the state, this is the uh, Penang priority economic areas uh, in terms of where we would like to develop the state. And uh, digital economy and startup is uh, one of the areas that we are highly uh, focusing right now uh, to build the uh, Penang state. Uh, we have also established a few uh, districts uh, where we like to basically invite uh, companies in those and in the related technologies to come and basically uh, build the companies here. So a little bit more about the role of Digital Penang. Uh, Digital Penang is basically what we do is we develop and execute programs that nature startups. We also engage with partners locally, internationally to provide access to development funding and market access opportunities. And we work with non-tech and other industry organizations such as manufacturing to adopt startup solutions in the industry. Uh, the following slides follow shows uh, the profile of the Penang uh, startup ecosystem right now that we have and uh, the breakdown of the companies and the sectors where they're involved in, as well as the fundraising target uh, that the startup has uh, uh, targeted for this year. And in terms of the stages of growth, uh, you can see that uh, majority of the startups here in Penang are still in the seed stage, but we have quite a, a good number of companies that is in Series A as well as 
saves B. Uh, in terms of the vertical focus, we would like to basically, in the state of Penang, build uh, certain uh, technology verticals as highlighted here in our slide. Uh, basically, hard tech as well as uh, blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cyber technology, and climate and ESG. Uh, Penang is a wonderful place uh, for people to come and start a startup, especially those that are looking to access Southeast Asia as a market. Uh, and we, follow, we offer the following advantages. In terms of infrastructure, uh, we have very good 4G connectivity and 5G will be very soon within the horizon. Living quality, education and safety is wonderful here in Penang. Uh, we are also known as a food haven. And we have very good uh, as well connectivity in terms of transportation, uh, co-working spaces. In terms of human capital, we have very strong uh, trained and highly skilled graduates from uh, local universities uh, in terms of language. We are very fluent for English, Malay, Mandarin, and Tamil. We are very strong, tax-savvy young workforce and lower cost of working capital compared to other cities in the region. And we have also other developmental program and market access program uh, that is available uh, from the state as well as from the federal government to help startups to, to basically venture their business here. Uh, the following are the uh, collaboration that we look forward in the year 2023 with uh, other ecosystem uh, players out there in the world. Uh, we are looking to build more incubators and accelerators. We welcome you to come to Penang and start uh, such incubators. Uh, we are also looking to have cross-hosting of startups for market access. Uh, in particular, uh, in this year, we are going to run our market access program. So if any ecosystem out there who are keen to participate in this program, please reach out to me. And at the same time, we are looking for investors and venture capital who are keen to make investment in deep tech, hard tech, as well as AI verticals. Uh, please contact us here in Digital Penang uh, if you need to reach out to uh, my company. Or specifically for collaboration, you can also reach out to me here uh, and to find out more about what we can do together. Uh, that is all uh, for me in terms of sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sang. Thank you for um, sharing with us more information about the ecosystem of Pena. Um, thank, thank you. I thank hope you, you have a great day. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're now moving on to um, our last ecosystem, last but not least. We'll be learning more about Thea startup ecosystem from Ivan, who is the Director of Policy and Strategy at Pesco uh, and Invest Sofia. Um, so Sofia is first in Bulgaria, 123rd in the world, and really excelling in industries such as marketing and sales, transportation, and social and leisure. Ivan, thank you for joining us today. Uh, hi, Catherine. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for, for having me. Uh, all right, I will share my screen and uh, share a little bit more about uh, BESCO, the Bulgarian Startup Association, and uh, then the, about the SOFIA um, uh, ecosystem, startup ecosystem. So basically, BESCO, the Bulgarian Startup Association, represents uh, uh, more than 500 uh, technological innovation and uh, startup companies uh, from uh, idea to scale, through scale ups to uh, to big uh, tech uh, enterprises uh, represented here locally in Bulgaria are part of BESCO. Uh, what's our uh, vision, mission and goals? Uh, the vision is to change the mm, the, the economic model of Bulgaria towards industry with high added values. The mission how to achieve this vision is to transform the old legislation and to propose a new one. And uh, we are actively working in three main uh, pillars, access to capital, access to talent, and ease of doing business. Uh, in our research, those are the three fundamental pillars uh, which establish the successful startup and uh, innovation entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, worldwide. Uh, that's why we focus our uh, our um, initiatives in those three pillars. As we see on, on this slide, uh, the startup ecosystem in Bulgaria and especially in Sofia is growing rapidly uh, in the recent years. Um, our first VC fund started in 2006. And after that, as you see, uh, the, the number of uh, startups and uh, scale-ups uh, uh, rise by more than triple. 
And we have also uh, startups in uh, very different areas, such as uh, healthcare, gaming, uh, AI, machine learning, uh, app tech, and social media, e-commerce, blockchain, uh, cybersecurity, software development. Um, so uh, um, Bulgaria offers a very supportive ecosystem. Uh, as you see on this slide, uh, um, Bulgaria is, uh, supports the startups and uh, the technological business more than the, compared more to the uh, other countries in on the Balkan area. Uh, our main focus is growth and expansion, uh, also regulatory and uh, legal um, legal framework. Here we as BESCO uh, help with proposing new legislation in uh, for access to capital, access to talent and ease of doing business here locally in Bulgaria and uh, Sofia. Um, the companies based in Sofia are growing uh, rapidly after the third year of their development, as you see on this slide. And after the third year, uh, their number of uh, employees grow from 250 to more than 1,000, uh, which is uh, a, a good signal that uh, the companies, once they uh, establish themselves here and uh, reach the three-year mark, then they grow rapidly. Uh, but also some of the founders share that uh, here what is the secret sauce of the Bulgarian ecosystem is the, uh, the, the, the whole ecosystem is itself. Uh, and they want to, to help them to further, uh, to further develop it and to boost other newcomers to the ecosystem to, to help them grow. Um, the main obstacles by, uh, by uh, our members and all the, uh, representatives here in the local ecosystem is the availability of engineering and tech talent. Um, that's why we this year we, uh, with uh, the help of BESCO, we voted the blue card initiatives within the national parliament, which will help uh, foreign uh, talents to come easily to Bulgaria and to, to be employed by Bulgarian company. Uh, availability of the qualified manager is the second uh, major problem for. Uh, the startups, uh, uh, access to capital is the third one, uh, and access to, co to customers is the fourth. Uh, we are working uh, closely with uh, the startup founders and also with uh, the government to tackle all these challenges in the upcoming months and uh, years. Um, and the Sofia has a very good and very supportive ecosystem. Here you can see all, uh, all the organization which helped the founder uh, mature their business and to grow it here locally in Sofia. Uh, most of the services which are offered are uh, networking, access to capital, mentorship, training, advocacy, uh, access to customers and access to talent uh, as well. Uh, we are trying to tackle all these challenges together uh, and there are a lot of organizations helping entrepreneurship here locally in Sofia and in Bulgaria in general. And in terms of access to, to capital, 2022 is the best year in terms of access to capital. As you see, more than two, 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 250 uh, million VC funds are raised. Uh, and uh, on the right side on the slide, you can see some of uh, the, the funds which are offering financing to the early stage startups and also to the later stage scale-ups and help them grow uh, and to, to, to reach the global market from Bulgaria and from Sofia. And uh, my last slide is the key message I want uh, to, 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 to say to you that uh, Star Spec System in Bulgaria and in Sofia especially is growing rapidly. There are many VC funds who are expecting your ideas and projects. Bulgaria has an encouraging and supportive environment for the development of startup uh, companies. So uh, welcome to Bulgaria and we'll be glad to welcome you here locally in Sofia and help you to grow your business here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for um, sharing with us more information about the Sofia and the, also the Bulgarian startup ecosystem. We yeah. learned a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, you know, send a message to their um, website or also send us and we can forward the question to BESCO. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Now it's, it's the end of the morning session remember um if you if you're interested we have a lot more ecosystems who will be presenting on our 3 3 p.m session as well we have um 
12 other ecosystems from around the world, um, from Europe and also from the Americas. And it would be interesting if you can join that as well. If you missed any of the parts of today's session this morning, we will be sending a video so you can rewatch and revisit again. Um, if you haven't downloaded our report, you can download the report at um forward slash report. You can also add your startup to the startup link map on startuplink.com. If you have any other inquiries, please email us at feedback at startuplink.com. Um, to know more about other activities and other events that we, we will have in the future, connect with us on our socials. You can see us on chat. Thank you, everyone. Um, and we're really happy to have you and hope to see you again on our next event. Yes, uh, and you can also join our afternoon session through the Zoom link below. Uh, we will also be sending a reminder email as well later.